Hello, travelers. Before we get into today's message of the week, take a quick second to click the subscribe button so you can be notified of videos when they are posted. Secondly, if you are not on our email list and you are interested in joining one of our future trips, go ahead and go over to blacktravelersnetwork.com and join our email list by clicking on the pop-up about Rio Carnival. Carnival is a great introduction to Black Travelers Network and a wonderful introduction into how we conduct our travel experiences. So just by joining and signing up on the list, you will be notified of all things involving our travel to Brazil and Rio Carnival. So I want to get into the message for the week. And this week's travel message is expect the unexpected when you travel. So many people have yet to travel in today's environment. There is a major difference between pre-pandemic travel and current to eventually post-pandemic travel. And I've alluded to this in previous videos, but I wanted to really take the time to help you understand how now we're in an environment where you have to expect the unexpected when you travel. And what that simply means is have a plan for things that could possibly go differently than what you anticipated. So here are six unexpected situations that can happen when you travel. And you should definitely prepare yourself with a backup plan as to how you would handle any of these situations should it occur. The first unexpected situation you should have a plan for is missing your flight or in certain cases, missing your cruise. Given today's environment post pandemic, many places will recommend you show up to the airport as early as four hours before your flight departs. If you are late for your flight and somehow miss your flight, then you still should have a plan in place in terms of how you are going to get to your desired destination. Being on time is really critical when we're talking about travel. But as we all know, there are all these unexpected things that can happen while you're on the way to the airport, whether it's waking up too late, getting delayed in traffic, or the lines being too long and you don't anticipate that. There are a variety of reasons why a person can miss their flight. Also for cruises, those of you who like to go on a cruise regularly and often, you know that when that cruise ship docks, they give you a time where you should be back at the dock in order to catch your cruise. However, oftentimes there are people here and there who will misread the time or forget the exact time that they're supposed to be back at the dock. And in those situations, there have been a number of people who unfortunately miss the cruise ship going back. And that's a huge problem because they have all of their belongings on there and chances are the crews may be stopping at a different location before continuing on to the final destination. So there are a number of reasons why missing your cruise ship back can be an inconvenience, but it's definitely something that is unexpected and not anticipated because we all like to think we're going to be on time. We all like to think that we will pay attention to what time we're supposed to be at the dock. But we all know that sometimes it's easy, especially when you're traveling, to get lost in the moment and things happen and sometimes you're just a little too late, a little too tardy. And so just make sure you know what you need to do in the event, worst case scenario, you miss a flight or a cruise ship. The second 
unexpected situation you should have a plan for is what if your wallet gets stolen? You know, traveling and having your money in your wallet or your credit cards in your wallet is really something that has happened to a number of travelers. In order to be proactive and to plan ahead in the event that something like this happens is really important. Number one, that you don't put all of your financial documents in the same place. So I would not put my money in the same place necessarily as my credit cards. And I think that depending on your credit cards, you should have a main card and at least have a backup card. So if one gets lost or stolen, you have something that you can immediately turn off and you have the other one that you can access and continue on your travels as if nothing ever occurred. The third unexpected situation you must have a plan for is what if you lose your passport? Oh my gosh, <laughs> this is like one of the worst case scenarios if you're out of the country and you just can't find your passport. This has happened, and this happened to me unfortunately one time and I was very blessed to be able to retrace my steps and get my passport back before it was time for me to leave the country. It turns out I had left my passport in a rental car at the airport. And so I was out and about and away from the airport. And luckily the people at the airport found my passport, kept it for me. So when it was time for me to leave, I just simply had to go to the rental car facility to collect my passport and I was on my way. But it is such an unexpected interruption that can really cost you a lot more money than what you could even foresee because not being able to have your passport on you affects you being able to exit the country. It affects you being able to board your flight. It just affects everything. And so because of that unexpected possible situation that happens as a result of, you know, us being excited about our trip and just doing way too much at one time, that is a situation that you must have a plan for. And usually in those types of situations, your first, the first thing you need to do is really contacting the embassy. But at the same time, there are so many more steps that need to happen in order for you uh, to make sure that you are able to get the proper documentation in order to leave whatever the country is. That is a situation you absolutely do not want to be in, I tell you. Um, but there are a number of things that you can do that will prevent you from uh, being in that situation. The fourth unexpected situation you must have a plan for when traveling is if someone whom you're very close to or who's in your family passes away while you're traveling. You know, this can be a very difficult situation to be in. It's something that I can say I've experienced on more than one occasion, unfortunately. And there's no real easy solution for this kind of unexpected situation. I think that if you are in a situation where you're dealing with someone who is or part of your family who has been sick for a while uh, or who is not expected to last much longer due to age or poor health, then you have a better shot at preparing yourself in the event that you need to abruptly leave whether it's a city or a state or a country. And that is hopefully one of those situations that you can think about and talk among your family members and let them know like, hey, I'm gonna be away during this time. If something unexpected happens, here's how I want you to 
explain to me that I need to get back. For some people, hearing that someone who's in your family or a loved one has passed away and you're out of the country or you're out of the state, that can be very traumatic. Having to get on a flight to get back home with this heavy, sad news is just really difficult, especially if you're traveling by yourself. So I would just recommend that you be proactive with your friends or your family and letting them know that here's the worst case situ situation. If something happens that's serious, that I need to come back home immediately, just let me know as soon as possible or don't tell me the bad news before I arrive home. At least make me think that the person is still going to be okay. Um, because I, I've just found in my experience, it can be very traumatic for someone to learn that their mother or father has passed or a sibling has passed away and they're getting on a flight trying to rush to get there. That can be overwhelming, especially if they're by themselves. The fifth unexpected situation that you should have a backup plan for is, oh my gosh, what if you get injured while you're traveling? You know, this is so random and it can be so minor to something relatively major, something minor like a sprained ankle or something major like you having to be hospitalized. I think the first most obvious way to prepare yourself that's actually pretty much necessary when traveling in today's environment is number one you must have traveler's insurance something that's going to cover you in the event of any kind of unexpected situation especially something dealing with your health or your body um, you definitely want to make sure that you have coverage uh, for that but who's going to be the primary person to take care of you. You know, we have a lot of solo travelers, people who move about places by themselves. If you get injured or you get really sick, who's there in that particular city, state, or country that can come and look after you, that can help out in getting you to the hospital if that's where you need to go? Having that plan sorted out is actually really important to being proactive as a way of you making sure you have a plan in place to take care of yourself. You know, oftentimes solo travelers are used to going about and maneuvering on their own and by themselves, but you definitely need to look out for yourself and make sure in the event of injury or illness, you will be taken care of. The final unexpected situation that we have to now think about and plan for is what if we are inside of a country and the country closes its borders and we cannot get out? What is the plan? You know, prior to the pandemic, we never had to think about this. The idea that a country would close down their borders was not even something we would even think to be proactive about because this is something that's never really happened. And I want to point out that during the pandemic, if you recall, there were all these stories of these people who were stranded in these different countries around the world. They didn't get out of the country before the country closed their borders. I want to clarify and make it a point to let you know that the people who un were unfortunately unable to get out of the country, many of them ignored the travel warnings that had been given to them that it's time for you to report to the airport because the country is going to close its borders and you need to catch the soon as flight out. Many of them either ignored it or they just didn't receive the notifications that were given by the United States that all U.S. citizens, if you're abroad, you need to come back home. And so as a result of them either ignoring it or not being notified in a timely enough manner to cut their vacations and trips short to get home, 
that resulted in them being stuck inside of the country. So I do want to clarify that point that in the event that a country decides to close its borders, you will typically get an alert notifying you of what's going on and what steps you need to take to make sure you're able to exit the country sooner rather than later. But with that being said, it's still important to have a backup plan for the, the places that you may potentially visit. Where will you stay? Heaven forbid, you're not able to exit a country in a timely enough manner. You know, this is something that I feel is better when you travel with a group because the group can kind of problem solve and there are all these things that can benefit groups. So understanding where will you go to stay if you for some reason cannot exit the country? Will you stay in an Airbnb? Will you stay in a hotel? Where in the city are you going to stay that can accommodate you for a longer term amount of time that's not going to be extremely expensive? Again, we're talking about making sure you have backup plans in place to ensure that while you're away, you are prepared for whatever the unexpected situation could potentially be. I certainly hope this gave you something more to think about so that you can be as prepared as possible before you take your next trip. Thank you so much for listening. And until next time.